We need characters on stage because they're who the story is about. But also, without characters, your actors would have nothing to do. And they would not like it. Hello, welcome to Write for the Stage. My name is Nicole and I'm a playwright. I'm here to help you learn how to share your ideas, whether that's for an audience of one or 1,000. Today's video is called Make Your Own Character. You will need two sheets of lined paper, a pen or pencil, and if you don't have paper or if you would rather type, then you can use a computer or a tablet instead. And optional, you can bring a sheet of blank paper with outlines and markers, colored pencils, crayons, basically anything you like to use to draw. Let's get started. As writers, we know that every story has to have characters because characters are who the story is about. Characters are the ones in stories who do things. And if a story has no one doing anything, that's probably not the most interesting story. Someone prove me wrong, that would be great actually. <laughs> and when we're writing for the stage specifically, we have to think about our actors. With no characters, our actors wouldn't have anything to do. Now, I know that we all have our own favorite characters that already exist, from TV shows that we like and movies and books, characters that mean a lot to us and inspire us and make us feel like we're seen and that is awesome. But today, we're gonna do something a little different. We're actually gonna learn how to create our own brand new, never before seen characters. And to do that, we're gonna use inspiration from our real lives. That's something that artists do all the time, by the way. They take something that happened to them or an opinion they have or an experience and they just kind of twist it, maybe change one little thing, maybe add one little thing, and they turn it into a work of art. And one artist who is very famous for doing exactly that is Frida Kahlo. I'm guessing you might have heard her name before. Some of you probably know a lot more about her than I do. If you don't know though, Frida Kahlo was a Mexican artist. She painted 55, which is a huge number, 55 self-portraits, along with many other paintings. And this is one of her self-portraits, titled Self-Portrait with Monkeys. You can recognize her face in the painting, right? It looks a lot like her real face in the photograph. You can also see four spider monkeys, a backdrop of big green leaves, and a bird of paradise flower. So we can't know what Frida Kahlo was thinking when she painted this, of course, we can't go inside her head, but we can make some guesses based on what we see and also what we know about her as a person. First off, we can guess that she didn't want to paint a portrait of just her real self, she didn't want it to look exactly like a photograph because that's not what she did. So we can guess that she wanted to use her imagination to add some other things and share maybe what was important to her. Second, we know that Mexico, her country, was really important to her. So we can guess that by painting herself surrounded by tropical plants and animals, like there are in Mexico, she might be telling a story about her love for Mexico and the pride she feels in being Mexican. And third, we know that the people of Mexico were really important to her, obviously not just plants and animals, right? And especially important to her were the indigenous peoples of Mexico and the indigenous cultures of Mexico. So the people who lived there before European colonizers invaded. In the portrait, she's wearing a traditional indigenous piece of clothing, and that's called a huipil. Some of you might have those in your home or maybe people in your family wear them. So we can guess that she might have been trying to tell us a story about how important indigenous people of Mexico are, the indigenous people of the past who are a part of history, and also the indigenous people who are alive today. In other words, Frida Kahlo found inspiration in her real life and her real face, and she used her imagination to turn that into art. You can do the exact same thing when you write. And speaking of which, 
let's get to the writing part. Okay, here's step one. So you're gonna grab one of the pieces of paper that you brought for this video, and you're just gonna fold that piece of paper in half. So we're gonna do it long ways, or sometimes people call that hot dog style, so it looks like a hot dog instead of a hamburger. And when you unfold it, you'll have two columns. And what you're gonna do then is just number each column one through five. Now, if you're working on a computer or a tablet today, if you're typing, you're gonna do the same thing. Just make two lists and number them one to five. If you wanna format them so that it looks like two columns and it looks really cool, that's great. But if you don't feel like it or you don't have time or you don't know how, don't worry about it. It'll still totally work. You just need two lists, one through five. First, in the first column, write down five words that describe you, like goofy, smart, or maybe caring. These words should be adjectives. Next, in the second column, write down five roles you play in your life. These words should be nouns. So let me give you some examples of roles you might play in your life and what I mean by that. A role could be a relationship you have, like daughter, sister, or maybe friend. A role could be a job, like student or babysitter. Or a role could be something you like to do, like soccer player, singer, or gamer. This is my list of adjectives or words that describe me. So I'm passionate, I get very, very energetic and into projects that I do. I'm smart, I'm sensitive, I'm nervous. I think that one came into my brain because I get a little nervous every time I'm filming these videos. And creative. And here's my list of nouns or roles that I play in my life. So two relationships that I have are I'm a daughter to my parents and I'm a sister to my brother. Then I thought about some jobs. So one job I have is that I'm a teacher. I'm also a writer, which writer is kind of both. It's a job that I have, but it's also something that I love to do. And when I was trying to think of other things I really love to do, I wanted to be a little silly. So I decided to make number five, chocolate eater, because I love chocolate and I love eating chocolate. Your lists don't have to be anything like mine. In fact, I would be very surprised if they were. So go ahead and pause the video now, take as much time as you need, and make your two lists. Nice job. Ready for step two? Here we go. So this step is pretty short. What you're gonna do is circle one word in each column or one word from each of your two lists. Basically, just pick your favorite word from each, and if you're having a little bit of trouble choosing which one is your favorite, maybe think about which word is the most unusual or the most interesting to you, or maybe just the word that kind of jumps out to you a little bit more than the others. Now, these two words describe your new character. So for example, your character might be a goofy daughter, a smart babysitter, or a caring soccer player. Optional, you can draw a picture of your character. Now, even if you don't think you're very good, quote unquote, at drawing, which side note, I kind of don't think that that's so important, I hope you'll give it a try anyway. Because sometimes as a writer, drawing really helps me think about my stories and my characters in different ways. It uses a different part of the brain. And that can be really helpful, even if I don't end up keeping my drawing forever and ever and framing it and thinking it's the best thing in the world. So the two words that I circled were nervous and chocolate eater. So my character is a nervous chocolate eater. And this is my drawing. So you can tell that I wasn't really worried about making the drawing look realistic at all. Instead, I was focused on her emotion. So that's why I really wanted to give her those big, round, nervous looking eyes. Of course, I also had to get the chocolate in there. So you can see she's got a chocolate chip cookie, she's got a chocolate bar, and she's just kind of shoving chocolate into her mouth. As I was drawing, I came up with a name for the character, Nellie, but that's actually part of step three. 
so don't worry if you don't have a name for your character just yet. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and take all the time you like. Have fun. Awesome job. Okay, this is the last step, step number three, and it's super fun. We know a little bit about who your character is at this point. So now what we need is to actually hear your character's voice. So what you're gonna do is write a letter from your character to yourself. Start your letter like this. Dear, your name, so my letter would start Dear Nicole. Dear, your name, there's something I want you to know about me. From there, you can really write anything you want. When you reach the end of the letter, you're going to sign it with your character's name. This is my letter from Nellie the Nervous Chocolate Eater, and it goes a little something like this. Dear Nicole, there's something I want you to know about me. I need chocolate to survive. You don't understand. I get so nervous all the time. What if I trip and fall? What if I say something dumb? Chocolate is the only thing that calms me down. Sincerely, Nellie the Nervous Chocolate Eater. Now it's your turn. Hit that pause button and write your letter. Remember, this is the last step, so take your time. Happy writing. That's it, you're done. You learned how to create your own brand new, never before seen character. I hope you had fun. If you want to share your character, then what I'd recommend is reading your letter out loud to somebody who lives with you. Ask them what they think and what they notice about this character that you've invented. On the other hand, if what you really want to do is keep writing, you can learn more about your character by answering these questions. How old is your character? Where do they live? What's one thing they really like? What's one thing they really don't like? As a little bonus, you can use this same character for any Write for the Stage video. Thanks for watching Write for the Stage. I'll see you next time. Bye.